Welcome back. Thanks for watching Smart Money on CNBC TV 18. Today we're speaking to Ashish Somaya of White Oak about the opportunities in the mid-cap space, especially the mid-cap market leaders. And very interestingly, if you map the last 5 or even 10 years, or even 15 years for that matter, mid-caps have outperformed in a big way, outperformed both large as well as small caps. But uh, Ashish, uh, you know, I just wanted to understand currently what situation are we in as far as either regulatory or policy tailwinds are concerned? Um, what could drive the mid-cap performance in that sense? Yes, yeah, so we did make like a you know, brief mention in the uh, earlier part of the conversation, which is very important, that if you see post-COVID, and I personally, if you really ask me, it's not just post-COVID, it's even demographics and it's even the macroeconomic construct. But post-COVID, there is an accelerated discussion about you know, manufacturing being diversified, supply chains being diversified, and a lot of industries moving from China to uh, say countries like India. Mm. There's data to say that, you know, almost 35 to 40 percent of that moves to Vietnam. Mm. Uh, but Vietnam is a different case, you know, because if it's a Chinese business diversifying, they might choose Vietnam. Mm. But as far as multinational companies are concerned, they are choosing India. So 20 percent of all manufacturing which moves out of China comes to India. And that's why the government obviously has announced these PLIs, mm. right? So all the PLI announcements are related to uh, auto ancillaries, uh, they are related to electronics components, white goods, uh, EV batteries, many of those like, you know, pharma APIs, chemicals. Now, all of those, so those are, that's a big change in policy. The government is really incentivizing. We already, we have 15% in tax for new uh, businesses. On top of that, there are these PLIs, which are like cashback kind of thing. So all of these sectors, which I named and subsectors, they are not large cap. There's no large cap companies in these sectors fully populated by mid-cap and to some extent small cap. So that's one policy tailwind. The second thing is everything related to our regulations and governance. So if you see consolidation because of GST, yeah. increased tax compliance, you know, more boost to the, uh, uh, you know, like kind of uh, hit out on the parallel economy and more uh, move towards formalization. Actually, more the need to invest in mid-caps and market leaders, right? I mean, increased Absolutely. tax compliance is something Absolutely. that sometimes small companies can't uh, get up to speed Absolutely. with. So, and even consolidation. So all the market share gains because of consolidation, a yeah. lot of those things, if you take these whole sectors which are related to home interiors, you know, like wires and cables and electric fittings and fixtures, mm. if you take tiles, if you take paints, right, a lot of the white goods and consumer related stuff. So wherever it is formalization, consolidation, uh, PLI, government policy, a lot of those things are happening in this space which happens to be populated by mid and small cap companies. Because like I said, the large cap index has a lot of big IT companies, global commodities, cyclicals, metals, uh, you know, oil and gas, those kinds of things. Mm. So that obviously is not driven by what we are discussing. Okay, so give us some examples, right? I mean, which are the mid-cap companies? And I want to give that disclaimer right away that these are not buy recommendations. But which are the mid-cap companies that are not just market leaders, but have the potential to become large caps over the next five to ten years? So this is the holy grail, right? Because everybody invests in mid-caps in the anticipation. Like, you know, all the examples I'm giving, whether I speak of per capita, whether I speak any of these things. Ultimately, the point is that these industries or these sectors will come off age, they'll come off scale, mm -hmm. and a lot of the mid-caps will eventually become large caps. So if I can give you example, I mean, I gave you two examples. Let's say, for example, uh, there's one outlier, right? Say l and Infotech, till very recently, used to be upper end of small cap or just a mid cap and it's become a large cap. So there are very few examples that in a five year holding period, a small and mid sized company actually becomes large cap. Yeah. Right. And we did some data crunching, which actually says that if you hold the mid cap index like a physics, like a chemistry lab experiment, you hold the mid cap index for five years and just go away, come back five years later. 40, or 40 to 50 percent of those companies will remain mid cap, but give you a decent return. Mm. There are still 15 to 18 percent of the companies which have a track record of moving from mid-cap into large-cap okay. and giving outlier returns. So what are these examples? Like, say, for example, if you see, I just mentioned to you, like Titan, for example, was a small company or a mid-cap company and then became large. Yes. Now, if you look at it in today's terms, again, very difficult to forecast, but if you see in today's terms, a lot of the chemical space, which was small-cap and has now become mid-cap, but if you look at it at a five year, five, seven year horizon and whatever we're talking in terms of consolidation or uh, manufacturing and exporting, 
then a lot of those could actually that space mm. the second one i think is a lot of companies in the consumer discretionary space mm. we discussed some examples right but uh, it's not necessary that all of those would get stuck in time at 30 40000 crore market cap so like which ones are you like say for example a voltas i give you an, yeah. I, i mentioned to you or all the market leaders we mentioned like mm. say indian hotels mm. or you know quick service restaurants etc so there's no reason for a country like india which is 2000 dollar per capita but 140 crore people mm. there's no reason why these companies would remain i can give another example like say vip industries is one of the largest luggage makers in, is the largest in india yeah. but not just india also one of the largest luggage makers all over the world if i'm not wrong is still a small cap company okay. uh, i would but be doing a disservice very hard during the pandemic yeah of course the yeah i mean see that is a situation specific thing yes, yes. but i don't think that's going to be forever uh, and i would be doing a disservice a disservice if i don't give you examples from my industry Yeah. <laughs> so go the, ahead please. yeah so you know i mean one of the most respected names uh, you know like say for example hdfc is listed mm. they are a mid cap company and you know that the asset management industry has like a long way to go whether you speak about digitization capital market adaptation savings and investing so i mean you know if you see in india next 10 to 15 years mm. a lot of the mid cap space is going to really scale and it's evident in the data yes my guess is that if you did all this data crunching 10 years back yes. i don't think mid cap would have been the best performing benchmark okay. but in recent times it's turning out that way and my guess is it will sustain like that for the next 10 15 years purely because of the stage of evolution that we are in and even if you look at it, the 15 year uh, you know if in the last 15 years it's what a 13% gain that the mid cap index has given not bad at all i don't know any other asset class that will give you a 13% return unless you're doing stock picking yourself and you're exceptional at it yeah. but if you had put your money in just a mid cap fund right yeah. over the last 15 years of 30 yeah of course we are using indices for ease of discussion but you know professional managers or anybody who, who thinks that he's a stock picker should ideally uh, you know uh, do better mm-hmm. my guess is that this data wouldn't have been like this if you did the same data crunching 5 6 years back Uh, so i think something has changed in our construct in the last in the recent few years because of all the tailwinds we discussed and my sense is it's just the beginning it will remain like that for times to come at least foreseeable future okay on that optimistic note we we'll let you go ashish thank you so much it was a, a very informative and entertaining discussion thanks a lot for being with us on smart money uh, with that it's a wrap thanks a lot for watching we'll be back again same time same place next week <laughs>